All right, so inclined plane, just draw a triangle, yeah? Yeah. And notice it says an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal, that means it's this angle, okay? Okay. This angle, and this is the block, and then that weighs 10 kilograms, cool? And then 35 Newton, okay. That's okay good. So far, that's the setting, and then what are the forces with this? So there's always gonna be a gravitational force straight down, right? And then a force up. Uh, so like that? Yeah. Uh, no. So that's the normal force. And normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So it's not going to go directly up. It would yeah. go directly up. It was like this. It's going to go at an angle. OK, like this. Yeah. Like where the box is, depending on the box. Yeah, exactly. So that's the normal force. And then we have an, uh, a frictional force going this way. Yeah, because the box is going to move this way. And Wait, the box is going down? Uh, yeah, the box would slide down. Oh, right? sliding down, sliding yeah, down, okay, yeah. makes sense, okay. So that's the setup. That would be the free body diagram, cool? And what is the magnitude of its acceleration? Okay, that's what we're trying to find. Yeah, Okay. so in a question like this, whenever you have an inclined plane question, what mm -hmm. you should do is you should um, break down this FG vector, you see this? The force of gravity? Yeah, break down that vector into this vector, Okay. And this vector. So this so going make down. Just it into a triangle? Yeah, exactly. Just this going down will be this plus this, right? Is it like to find like the force of gravity or what is this for? Um, so we're just because this, we need something to cancel out with the force, uh, with the normal force. Yeah. Yeah. We need something to cancel out of this. So what are we going to do is we're going to split up this force going downwards into this plus this. So this cancels out with this. Yeah. Okay, but where would, the, where would the 35 Newton be? Oh, that's here. That's the frictional force. That's we, we, yeah. We're not worried about that right now. So Okay, we're just trying to cancel yeah. it. So we're just trying to cancel this 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 guy, okay? Okay. So we're always going to break down the FG, okay, FG, into okay. this and this, okay? And you see this angle 30 degrees? Yeah. It's going to go all the way up there. Uh, how come? Because it's, it's they're 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 similar triangles, you know, similar triangles. Oh, you just basically drew the same triangle. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Kind of. So whatever, this is not a right angle, right? It's this is right also angle. a right angle triangle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, something like that. So this is a right angle triangle, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be the thirty degrees. Okay. Cool. So we have yeah. a smaller triangle inside there. Now the question is, what is the magnitude of this 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 vector here? Well, we, we have all the angles, right? So yeah, but we, we don't have any of the sides, right? Uh, so again, here let me let me do this step by step. So what? step one, we have this triangle. Okay, looks something like this. It's a little bit weird, but um, this is a right angle triangle. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I should draw like this. So it's a, see inside there you have this. Yeah. Yeah. Which side is the longest, do you think? To to right? Yeah, this one would be the longest, right? So the right angle yeah. would be right there. Okay. This here is FG. Oh, okay. I see how it's a right angle. Yeah, it kind of looks weird. Yeah. Okay. This is FG. Okay. So what would this side be in terms of FG? Uh it would be the Okay, be, so the opposite? Uh, no, opposite would be this side, right? What would this side be? We're, we're talking about that. Like, what do you, like, from what way, like the FG? Yeah, it'll be, well, what if this was 10? All right, what if this hypotenuse was 10? What would be this side? How do we find this side? I uh, just use, you can use sine. No, you can't. See, sine would give you the sine down here, opposite, right? We have this 30 degrees. Sine oh, okay. would give you opposite. So you need to use cosine, okay? So we just do like cosine 35? Yeah, or not 35, th don't worry about the 35. FG is gonna be 10 times 9.81. Oh, sorry, 30, I meant to say 30 though. Okay, yeah, cosine. Yeah, times. yeah, exactly. So this sign is FG, yeah, whatever FG is, times cosine 30, cool? And you just timed it by 9.8, right? Oh yeah, so FG is gonna be 98.1 newtons because the yeah. mass is 10. So FG is always, it's always mass times. Yeah, FG is always MG, mass times gravity. Okay, so we already know what that is. Yeah, so we know this side, FG cosine 30. So that's just going to be 98.1 
times cosine 30. Yeah. Yeah, because it's offset over. Okay. Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse Sorry, cosine. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So 98.1 times cosine 30 on a calculator. That gives me that side is 84.96 newtons. OK. Wait, so where you're going from what angle? Like you're going from the right angle, right? Yeah. So wouldn't that be just the FG wouldn't be the opposite? FG? No, no. Opposite would be you don't go from the right angle. Right angle just tells you. Oh, you go from the 30. Is. You're going from yeah. the 30, right? Looking at it okay. from 30, this side is the adjacent, yeah? Opposite adjacent, I promise. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll probably yes. go for the right angle. Now, um, you see this vector going downwards? Oh, uh, yeah. This will cancel with this vector up there, okay? So what's up there is like 84.9? Oh, yeah, exactly. So if we don't have a coefficient of kinetic friction or whatever, but Fn would be 84.96 going up, okay? Yeah. We don't need this for this question because it, it didn't ask us. It, it's not telling us what the coefficient is. They've already given us 35 units. Now, what we're interested in is this side. Now, how do we find this side down there? But why, why do you need to find this side? Um, because the box is sliding this way. You see the box is sliding this way. So we need to find this vector. Okay. Well, you can do a squared plus b squared, right? You or could, you but cosine. again, well, we already have oh, FG. Just... Yeah, we're just going to do FG sine, sine theta, okay? Yeah, this yeah. side, that'll be easier. So this, this vector is going to be FG sine theta. Opposite, yeah? Opposite, that's why it's sine. Yeah. So again, just plug that in the calculator. FG is 98.1. Uh, times sine of theta 30. So that side is 49.05 newtons. Are you good so far? Okay, so I just, I'm, con I'm, I'm a bit confused. I'm not gonna lie. So I don't understand why. You, so I know, so the, I know why you had to find that the one of the sides to cancel Fn out, right? Yeah. And then you've, you already know what, you already know what Fg was. Mm -hmm. Force of gravity, and then I don't. I still don't understand what the point of finding the other one was. So, like, what's uh, the, the, what? So, what what force is gonna bring? What what force is gonna slide this down? This one. That's why I need to find this. See, this this box is gonna travel this way, right? Yeah. This is the thing that that's gonna bring it down at an angle in this direction. And what is this force? It's this one right right there, the opposite of this triangle. So we just use FG to find to cancel out FN, and then we just. Just find last thing we just solved for which way. So we going. used FG cosine 30 to cancel out with FN. Okay. See, FG cosine okay. 30 is this one. This one is FG cosine 30. We use this one going down to cancel out with FN. Mm -hmm. well, now in this triangle, you see this side? This yeah. is the this is the force that's gonna make this box move this in this direction. So the next step is to find this. Okay, makes sense. In fact, here. The net force, the net force in this diagram, in any of these kinds of diagrams, in kind planes, it's going to be the x component, okay, the x component of this vector, which is this side, the horizontal component, mm -hmm. minus the frictional force. Oh, because one's, one is going yeah. like basically east and one's going south. Yeah, so or, here. Sorry, east and west. Yeah, so here, once everything cancels out, we're just going to have this force going left, okay, FF. And then we are going to have this MFGX going down in this direction. And that's so what this have, is. We have 35. Yeah. So we have FGX. We found that out here, which is FG sine theta. So that is 49.05 minus 35, right? Okay. And that is divided by what? The mass, what's the formula for F net? It's always mass times the acceleration. Yeah. So you divide by mass to get rid of Yeah, mass. exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we would divide by mass. So what is mass? 10. 10, right? So A is going to be 49.05 minus 35 over 10, right? So what would that be on a calculator? Uh, just give me a second. I can, you know what I was doing? It's, it's 1.4. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. And the units for this is meters per second squared. And there you go. OK. So like, basically, you solve the components way, right? Yeah, so I don't exactly. Know if that's the way he wants us to solve it on the test. because There's no other way to solve this. And it's fine if I don't, I don't say x and y, right? Because yeah. you didn't say x and y. 
Yeah, that's fine. As long as you get this, as long as you understand what's going on here, you just break this apart. Okay. Always okay. break this vector into this and this. This is going to cancel out with the normal vector going up. Mm -hmm. And then you're interested in this and the angle will be right there. Do you always do this when it's inclined? Yeah. But look, at, let's say it doesn't give us the friction force. Then so your we'll... net force will just be this one, FG sine theta. And so oh, the yeah. acceleration will just be FG sine theta divided by 10. So 4.9 meters per second squared. Okay, so whenever just, I see an inclined plane, I just draw the right triangle and then I just solve for that. Yes, yes. So the procedure is the same. Okay, sounds good. And we, the, he can ask me like to find the mass, right? Let's yeah, he can ask you anything. Yeah. I'll just do the opposite, right? I'll just divide by the acceleration. Yeah, so, let's see, let's see. I, I'm sure there's a question like that. You understood this this question? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. Yeah, let's do another one. Um, Now what's going on here? Again, same thing, right? It's being pulled up. Instead of going down though, sliding would mean it's going down, right? Going opposite way. Yeah, it's, it's going up. So we're pulling it this way, right? We're pulling it this way. What does the UK mean? I don't, I don't know. Oh, UK is, um, so frictional force, right? Frictional force is yeah. equals to mu K. Oh, this is called mu, um, it's a Greek oh, letter. A yeah. letter. Yeah, it's pronounced mu, whatever, UK, times the normal force. So this will give you the frictional force. Okay, I see. Okay. So we're being pulled up. We don't know by what force, right? I'm just gonna call that FA applied force. And then again, the free body diagram, what else is gonna happen here? We have a um, gravitational force straight down, right? Like that? Uh, yeah. And then we have a normal force in this direction, FN. Yeah. Wait, sorry, what's FA? Applied force, the force that they're pulling it up with. Oh, okay. Uh, that doesn't say we don't, we don't have that, right? We don't have that yet, but uh, it's being pulled up. So that means something is pulling it up. All right. You're right. Okay, so you're that's, right. that's what I'm just calling it applied force. Okay. And we're missing one force in this free body diagram. What's the last one? The friction. Yeah, exactly. And the frictional force is going to be in this direction. And that's the free body diagram. What's the angle here? It's 25 degrees, right? Like that. And now we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to break down this FG vector. Yeah. The to a mass, triangle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To a triangle. And now here, understand this. If you understand this, you can do all, all of these questions. So what you do is you break this down into this. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let me try and make it like a right angle into that and like this. So this FG is going to become this one and this one. OK. And this angle always, doesn't matter how it's slated, right? If, even if the thingy is moving the other way, it'll always be like this. See, the right angle is going to be here. The angle is going to be here. Same thing here. The right angle is here. And this angle, 25, is up there. Cool. OK. All right, we're good. So if you want to know the nomenclature, see, this side is called FGX. This vector is called FGX. And FGY. And, yeah, exactly. And the thing that cancels out with the normal force is called FGY. And then we, we already know the other one because it's 9.8, right? Oh, we know which one, sorry. Which one uh, do we know? Uh, like the one that you didn't want, like put, put the subscript. Like uh, this yeah, this one, yeah, we always know FG as long as they, they, they've given us the mass, OK? But it, yeah, because it's mass times acceleration. So yeah, it's, right? it's MG, it's simple. That one's simple, right? So now, um, see, we're, we're missing the frictional force, right? So in order to find the frictional force, we need the normal force, Fn. Which vector cancels out with Fn? The uh, Fx, F, F, Fgy. Fgy, right? So let's first find Fgy. So Fgy, again, right? If you look at this triangle, you have a right angle right there. And then this angle is 25. So would this be sine or cosine Fg? Fg is here. Uh, it's the left, right? It will be uh, all, it's, it'll be cosine. Good, perfect. So it's going to be Fg times cosine of the angle, 25. Yeah. Okay, so it would so, be 9.8, right? Uh, so it would be Fg is Mg cosine 25. 
mg, okay? So it's going to be 35 times, times. 9.81 times cosine of 25. Okay. And what would that be? 35 times 9.81 times cosine of 25, and that is going to be 311.18 newtons. And again, notice the direction, it's this way. Okay. That and we know sense. that's going to cancel out with Fn. So this Fn has the same exact magnitude, but the opposite direction, right? Mm -hmm. Fn is Fgy because they cancel out because the box is not moving up and down. It's just going to slide across this plane, right? So that means this vector is going to cancel out of this vector. So Fn also has a magnitude of 311.18. Okay. Once we have this, we're going to find the frictional force. Frictional force is equals to mu k times Fn. Mu k is given, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, 0 0.21 times 311.18. And then again, that's just a calculator plug and play. That's going to give us 65.35 newtons. Solid. And then Are we good now so we far? just have to, yeah, we just have to find the Fnx now, right? Yeah, exactly. The frictional force? Fgx, Fgx. Yeah. So we just have to find this vector. And now let's let's look at the question here. It's telling us if we want to apply a force parallel to the surface of the incline, which is FA, okay, it's parallel. Let's see they're parallel, these two lines. And then what must be the applied force to move the crate at a constant velocity? Now, what do you think the acceleration is when the velocity is constant? The acceleration is constant. I don't know. Um, so acceleration is change in velocity over time, right? Yeah. This is the formula for acceleration. If I give you some values here, let's say t is 10 and 20, and let's say the velocity is 100 at both, what would the a be? Uh, just 100 over 10. It's a change in velocity, OK? Change in velocity. That oh, means so it'll be 100 over 10. Uh, it'll be vf minus vi over all right, all right. TF minus TI. Okay. So you see, you get a 20 minus 10 in the denominator, the change in time. What do you get in the num numerator? 100 minus 100. So that's gonna be zero over 10, that's a zero. So this is an important idea. Whenever they say constant velocity, acceleration is zero. Okay. Now, if that's acceleration is zero, what else do we know? We, we know net force is M times A, right? Yeah, so it's zero. It's zero, exactly. So the net force of this system is zero. Wait, now, so the Fn and the Fnet is two different things? No, no, the yeah, exact, they're different things. Fn is the normal force, Fnet is the net force. Okay, okay. And Fnet is Ma, okay, and Fn is the, the Fgy, basically, if it's on an inclined plane. If it's not on an inclined plane, that's, then it's just straight up Fg. But what does the Fnet, like being zero, help us right now? Uh, because, so the way to find Fnet is you need two different ways. In every question like this, you're going to find Fnet in two different ways. One of them is the formula way, Fma, yeah, which we know is zero. Mm -hmm. Now, from the free body diagram, what did we cancel out? We canceled out Fgy with Fn, right? Yeah. And we broke down the Fg vector, the main one. So what are the two vectors remaining? The frictional and the applied force to just subtract them and then you get the Fnet. The yeah, so we have the applied force, the frictional force, but also FGX. So does FGX uh, go like where the frictional forces? The, yeah, exactly. They go in the same direction. Do you just add them together? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then you just add them together. And then what you're saying is that the acceleration. Like, sorry, the applied force and both of them add together has to equal zero, right? Yes. So when you find FGX, you could just find what F applied force is. Yeah, so we'll add all of them up, set it equals to zero, and we can find the applied force. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, here's a question, though, actually. Um, it might not be very clear from the diagram. Since this is being pulled upwards, right, would FGX be in this direction or would it be in this direction? Uh, is it going to go down or is it going to go up FGX? If it's being pulled up, that means it's going to go in this direction, right? Right. What? So, yeah, in the previous question, it was sliding down. That's that way. That's Wait, so what you add to the applied force then? What, what do you add to the applied force? Because so FGX here, is still with the frictional, right? So here, look at this. The net force, What we have three different forces. FA is going this way, yeah? 
Yeah. Uh, FGX is also going this way because it's being pulled up. Yeah. And yeah. then we have yeah. the frictional force going downwards. So you add uh, the FGX with the applied force. Then. Yeah, we add this too, and we subtract this, set it equal to zero. Okay, um, I guess that makes sense. Because well, quickly, yeah, what's the question? It's okay. What what do you not get? No, no, I get it. I get it. It just got, I thought okay, that yeah, makes sense. Because if it's so, but it's going down, you do the opposite, right? You yeah. Do it with the yeah. Force. Yeah. So here we're gonna add FA and FGX because uh, we're pulling it up, right? Okay. So let's do the thing here. I'm going to quickly find out what FGX is. And what, wait, sorry, what's 311? Is that FGY, right? Yeah, that's FGY. FGY. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So FGX is going to be FG times, instead of cosine, it's going to be sine. Yeah, opposite. Okay. So I'm just going to plug that in the calculator. FG is going to be 35 times 9.81 times sine of 25. So that gives me 145.105. Good? Okay. And then you just, so you, it basically becomes 140, it'd be the force applied plus 145 point, uh, whatever, minus 311.18, right? Uh, where's 311.18? So again, this one, what is 311.18? Oh, okay. This cancels out with FN, yeah? So we don't right, need right, this right. anymore. We needed this to find the frictional force. It's minus 65. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we have the applied force. Yeah. Yeah. Plus 145.105 minus, minus 65 point this. And this is the net force. All the combination of the all three is a net force. And that is equals to zero. So you just you subtract the 145 first, 65. Yeah. What does that give? Calculator. Yeah, using a calculator is also like a, a thingy in this course, especially when you have like big, bigger numbers. Yeah, for my test, I got for the acceleration of the boat was like 0 0.0, like 1.5 or something like that. It's ridiculous. And apparently, it was right. I don't know how. What? <laughs> I know. I was, I, when I saw that number, I, I like, I knew I got it wrong. Like, you know, when you just like, you know, like, yeah. okay, Sorry, what were the numbers again? 145.105 minus 65.35. Sorry, 1. 145.105, yeah. Okay. Minus 65.35. Minus 65.35, okay. So that's like 79.75. Mm, that's not what the answer is. What if we add them up? Wait, 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 wait. I, maybe I did my math wrong. So it's 145.105 minus 65. 0.35, right? Yeah. Uh, you want me to add them up? Yes. Okay. Plus 63.35. So 65? 65, yeah, 65.35. 65. Yeah, I'd get 210 then. All right, so we should be adding them up. So that means something went our direction here. This one should be going downwards. FGX is not going upwards. Well, let's see if we can decipher why that is. You understood the math bit, right? Now we're going to talk yeah, about yeah, that. It's, it's, it's all good. Yeah. Same as last one. So Yeah, yeah. So again, here, let me just give you a quick review of the directions here. So FG is going to go this way, right? Always. Yeah. And FN is going to go this way, yeah? Okay. So that means when you're breaking down this FG vector, one of them is going to go, yeah, actually, it's going to go to the right. FG would be this way every single time. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I thought. That's yeah, yeah. So FA is going to be this way, and FF is going to be this way. So, so FG is time. always, yeah, every time. FG is going to be downwards. Okay. Cool? Yeah. So the new idea here was this. Uh, the frictional force is equals to mu k times the normal force okay and mu k will be given in the question usually let's say that's 0 0.21 or whatever and the normal force is going to be f g yeah y okay okay so this is a new idea in question two let's move on to question three. Oh yeah here what, what are they giving us oh do we have the time no uh no i'm right 
Yeah, they've not given us the time. If they give us the time, then we might have to even use the kinematics equations, actually. It gets a little bit more tedious, but here we can like rush through this, I think, if you can follow. I think you can. I think you get the hint, right? So the I angle is always going to be here, 35. 35, yeah. Yeah, this is the skier. He's a box. We don't care. This is a skier. FG. 85, yeah. Yeah, he's 85. And then FG, we're just going to break this down. This is FGY. And then this is FGX. The right angle is yeah. right there. If that's 35, that means this is 35. Right. So there's nothing pulling him up. That means he's going down due to this vector, FGX. So a sky with a mass of 85 is going, yeah, it's going downhill. Yeah, so this is the only vector that's pulling him down. Okay, there's no And with the, with the frictional force be to the left? Correct, yes. It's always in the opposite direction of motion. So he's going to go this way. Frictional force is going to be this way. Okay, but what is the, oh, so the friction is 0 0.3. Is that what's happening? Friction between um, the sky and the snow. So remember, oh. that's not the frictional force. Frictional force is equals to mu k, yeah? Or so mu, is that mu k? Oh, yeah, that is mu k times fn. So that's going to be 0 0.30 times the normal force, yeah? And we know the normal okay. force is fgy. OK, yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, I was so confused about the 0 0.3. Yeah, so that's mu k. That's mu k. That's called the coefficient of friction, OK? Yeah, it's my first time like seeing it. I don't mind so much. Now, tell me, from this diagram, fgy, is that cosine or sine? Isn't it just cosine? Yeah, it's good. Always, so it's FGY, always it's always cosine. FGY yeah. is going to be FG, which is MG times, and then the Y component just means you just multiply it with cosine 35. And the mass is given, and G is always 9.81. So yeah. yeah. Why would you tie it by 0 0.3? Uh, because I'm trying to find frictional force. Right? What's the formula for frictional force? Mu K oh, times the normal is it, force. Is that what we're trying to do first? Yeah. Oh, also, you're trying to find. If, but you can still do it the other way, right? So you're trying to find F, G, Y, so you can find the frictional force, right? Yes, yes. But I still don't get, because isn't the 0 0.3 going to the left? So like, I don't understand how you got it. Like how you, why, why are you multiplying? Oh, why am I multiplying with this? Like why am I multiplying 0 0.3 now? Oh, um, because that's the formula for frictional force. Frictional force is equals to the coefficient of friction, okay? times the normal force. So if it was going upwards, then we just multiply it by Fn, which would be Mg, OK? Mm -hmm. Frictional force is going this way. Frictional force, the formula for this is mu times the normal force every single time. So yeah, yeah this I is going to go this way. So whatever the number here is, it's going to go this way. That will be the frictional force. Yeah, I get that. But I don't know, like to find Fn, can you just do what's it called, like 35, cosine 35 times uh, 9.8 times 85. OK, I got you. Yeah, because yeah. I did it here in one step because I wanted to get it over with. But you're right. Yeah. Actually, show me a, a one step as well. You know, might yeah. as well. Yeah, so here, Fn is FGY, yeah? OK. So what is FGY? FGY is Mg times cosine of 35. All right, right. I see what you did. This is just, yeah. OK, makes sense. Yeah. But you can do it on the side every single time. You can be like Fn is the Y component of uh, FG. So that's going to be cosine 35 times mg. And then you'll find fn, and then you can multiply that with mu k. Here, I just did it in one step. Oh, OK, OK, I see. All right, you're good with this, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, so now we're just going to plug this in the calculator. m is 85, g is 9.81. So 0 0.3 times 85 times 9.81 times cosine of 35. So that gives me frictional force of 204.91 newtons. And we know this is going this way, yeah? Yeah. So now again, from the free body diagram, what cancels out? FG, we've broken this apart into these two. So that's gone. Yeah. Yeah. We know FGY cancels out with FN. Yeah. So what are the two forces left? The frictional force. And so you just subtract them, right? So you yeah, just exactly. find FGX uh, and you subtract the frictional yeah, force that we already exactly. have. Exactly. FGX is going to be, again, that's just MG times sine 35, right? Opposite. Yeah, and then you subtract them. Yeah, so 85 times 9.81 times sine 35. Uh, that gives me 478.28 newtons. And now, again, the net force is given to you by two different things. First one is mass times the acceleration, OK? okay. And the other way to get net force is from the free body diagram. And what's the net force? It's going to be FGX minus FF equals M times A.
Yeah. And you don't have acceleration, so you just divide it by the mass. Correct, exactly. So acceleration is just FGX, which we have, minus F of F, which we also have, divided by the mass, which we also have. And right. I'm just going to plug the values in there. 478.28 minus 204.91, all over 85. And that should give us the right answer, hopefully. 91 divided by 85. Yeah, I got 3.21. Okay, perfect. Okay, you see all the questions are very similar. If you know how to do one of them, you can do all of them. Uh, it's actually, I like it. It's pretty easy. It's pretty, makes sense, I guess. So we, let's, let's get away from this. Let's try and do something that we haven't done yet. Let's maybe do this one. Yeah. Now here the angle is missing. Oh, we can, uh, six is a bit different too, eh? Oh Before yeah, there's you... two different things going on in six. Okay, let's try and do six and seven. Now. When it says counterclockwise, that means the, the the big box is going sliding down, right? Yeah, counterclockwise means like um, this way. Yeah, so sliding down. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. So. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, do you just like draw two triangles right here? Like, how do you do say it? that again? Do you just like draw two triangles? Uh, yes, you do. Now here, um, in a question like this, now you have two different boxes. You kind of just have to memorize this, mm -hmm. or maybe if you want to do enough problems, you'll you'll get it. Okay. You see the um, what is pulling what here? There's a tension in the string here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is going this way, and this is going upwards, right? Yeah. Because this is going to pull it down. So they're both called FTs, OK? They're both called FTs. And, and they're the both same? equal. Yes, correct. OK. So let's look at the first box here. So I'm just going to draw the free body diagram for that guy. It's a good thing they gave us. I'm just going to focus on this guy, OK? Yeah, we did that first. Yeah. yeah. So we're going we're gonna to turn this into two different things. We're going to focus on the, this box first. Again, this is weighs two kilograms. FG, yeah? Yeah, but I just don't want to, oh, actually, yeah. never, mind. never mind, never mind. We'll focus on the first box and I'll ask questions about the second yeah. So this is 40, right? And that means mm -hmm. we want to break down the FG vector. It's going to be FGY, this one, plus FGX. The right angle's right there, 40 up there. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. And um, is it being pulled? Is there a friction? Yes, there is, you see? There's a coefficient of friction of 0 0.25. Yeah, mu k, yeah? Mu k. So, yeah. yeah. So there's a frictional force this way. And then there's a normal force this way, but that's going to cancel out with FGY. Are we good right. so far? Yeah, just like the question before. Yeah. Actually, what else is there? Um, so this guy is pulling this box, right? Yeah. So the it's tension FG. force, would it help it accelerate or would it pull it, like, not help it accelerate? Wouldn't it slow it down? It would slow it down. So that means FT is going to go this way. Yeah. It's another a frictional force. So you just add it to the frictional force yeah, and correct. you subtract it with the, no, what, what would you subtract it with? Uh, FGX, FGX. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now let's just quickly do this. Um, so step one, we can find the normal force. I'll just show you step by step. Normal force, sorry, um, we'll find the frictional force. That's what I meant. Frictional force is mu times the normal force. Mm -hmm. Mu is given, 0 0.25. The normal force is what? Uh, that's FGY, right? Which is mg, and again, it's cosine, right? right. Sine is opposite, cosine is adjacent. mg cosine of 40. Mass is given, 2 kilograms, G is 9.81. And I'm just going to put this in the calculator to get the frictional force. 0 0.25 times 2 times 9.81 times cosine of 40. That's going to give me 3.76 newtons. And that is our frictional force. OK? And again, how did I get this? This entire thing is FGY. FGY equals FN, yes. Yeah, FGY equals FN, correct. And FGY is mg cosine of theta. Yeah. 
And now we have that, we can find FGX and FGX is just gonna be uh, MGs times sign data. Yeah. So again, just plug that in the calculator, M is two. So two times 9.81 times sine of 40, that gives us 12.61. Okay. Newtons, okay. Are we good so far? We are good so far. All right, tell me from the free body diagram, what is the net force? So it would be 3.6. Uh, no, you subtract 12.6 from 3.6, right? Uh, yeah, it's going to be, um, so it'll be this FGX, yeah? Minus... We, we, we didn't do anything about the FT, we didn't, we didn't find that out, right? Which one, sorry? FT? Oh, uh, yeah, we will. We will write here. So F net is FGX going this way minus FF going this way. Yeah, that's why minus. Yes. And then we're also so going to subtract FT. Do we just make F net zero? Is that what we do? Uh, we don't know. F net is not going to be zero. Okay. So because it's not a con. Know? Yeah. So we're going to get an equation from this. And then we're going to do the same thing for this guy, the second box here. We're going to get another equation from that, and we're going to do elimination or substitution to get the two unknowns. So when you find basically like the FN yeah. for the 0 0.5, that's our FT. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Good. Yeah, FT, we won't find it here. We're going to have to do the same thing for this hanging box, okay? Yeah. And we'll find it then. So basically, FGY for the small box equals our FT. Uh, FGY for the small box equals its FN, not FT. We don't know what FT is here. Let me do but this. So FN and FT are two different things? Uh, FN and FT are two, two different things. Yes, correct. But FT for both of them are the same. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead then. All right. So here, F net is going to be M times A. Yeah. Okay. Every single time. And we have the values for FGX. What's FGX? Uh, that was 12.61 minus the frictional force was 3.76 minus ft which we don't know what it is right not yet right. we'll find it here mm -hmm. and we know m is two so i'm just going to subtract this and we're, we're going to get an equation for a or would it be better to get an equation for ft let me do this minus 3.76 so we get a is equals to 8.85 this minus ft and then divided by m so you see we got an equation here for a okay there's two unknowns in this equation, so we can't find either values just yet. We're going to do the exact same thing for this box, and then we can get both that, both of those answers. Okay, so we just do the small box first. And then yeah, we do the small box first. We get an equation for A, yeah. And then we just sub in the FT. Yeah, exactly, correct. We're going to sub, we're going to find the FT here, and we're going to sub it in. Actually, would it be better for me to solve for FT here? FT would be multiply both sides by 2, and then minus 8.85. That is minus FT. So we have an equation for FT as well, depending on which one is easier to plug in in that equation. So if, if we want to plug in A, we'll plug this. If we want to plug FT, we plug this. How did FT just go from negative to positive? I multiply both sides by negative one. Okay. Right? Oh, okay, I see. So this is an algebraic, just a play here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Simple okay, equation, okay. nothing fancy going on there. Uh, so we have everything we need. I'm just going to rewrite this up there. So FF, actually, we don't need this anymore. Now let's focus on the box that's hanging. Okay. So what are the forces on that box? Uh, FG. Yeah, exactly. FG. And FN. And, uh, if it's hanging, it doesn't have an FN. Should you say an F? FT, right? FT, the tension force in the string. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only things on a surface have a normal force FN. Okay, like this one is on a surface, has an FN. This one does not have an FN. Good? Makes sense, yeah. So from a free body diagram, F net, which, what's the net force here in terms of uh, the forces? Sorry, come again, I, I just don't know. So see, two things, F net is MA, yeah? Yeah. F net is also the sum of all the vectors from the free body diagram. Correct. So what would the F net be here for this guy? Oh, it would just be FT minus uh, FG. Correct. Bingo. Right? Like that. Yeah. Now, F net. So they're the same system, by the way. This thing and this thing, they're the same exact systems, right? So they same will, they will, they will yeah. have the same acceleration. Yeah. Okay. So the mass of this 
f net is m times a, right? So 0 0.50 times a, that is equals to ft, which we don't know what that is, minus, and the mg, uh, fg for that would be 0 0.50 times 9.81. Okay. Now I'm gonna add this on both sides. So 0 0.50 a plus 0 0.5 times 9.81. That gives me uh, 4.9. So that all is F2 equals is fine to FT. Yeah, and see now we have FT in terms of A. And now look at this. We also have FT. Yeah, so basically we just need to find FGY. Yeah, so we're just going to... We already had FGY. No, but for the small one. Oh, small one. There is no FGY. There's uh, only FG. Because it's, it's going straight down, yeah? FGY and FGX only oh. exists if it's at an angle. Okay, so this, what, would, what would you do? So now we're going to plug this as FT in here, and that's going to give us an A. You see this FT is equal to this, right? Yeah. We're going to make a substitution. You remember that from grade 10 or 11? We're going to sub in FT for what time? Uh, we're going to sub in FT as 0 0.5 A plus 4.9 in this equation. Oh, then just solve for A. Yeah, exactly. There we go. And that's the final step. Okay. Oh, that's it. Yeah. So whenever you have a thing like this, you want to do one box first, get an equation, because you can get the answers just from one box. They do the same thing for the other box, and then finally combine them using substitution, and then you'll get the answer. So you just subtract 4.9? Uh, yeah, I'm going to add 2a and then subtract 4.9, okay? Oh, so yeah. 0.85 minus 4.9, and then divide both sides by 2.5. So 8.85 minus 4.9 divided by 2.5. And I get 1.58, which is like 1.6. And then what about the Newton? What, yeah, the oh, the Newton. 10. Now we're going to plug in the A, either in this equation. Actually, I'm going to plug it in here to find FT. So now that we have A, yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to plug that in here. So 0 0.50 times 1.58 plus 4.9, and that is FT. So FT is 5.7, I suppose. Yeah, so let me plug that in. Uh, times 0 0.5 plus 4.9. Do I get the same thing? Yeah, I get the same thing. 5.69. FT equals that. And there you go. We have the, both the things. Okay, dokie. That does make a lot of sense. This is what, it was a bit more complicated. This is a little complicated. Same thing. It's yeah. all the same thing. So whenever you have a hanging thing, do it for one thing. Yeah, one box at a time. And again, okay. you're not going to get the answer in one, one thing. You have to combine them using substitution. Okay. Yeah, actually, yeah, I actually like this so far. You know, because it's pretty, it's pretty easy. At least I find it. It looks easy. It <laughs> looks easy. Actually, um, I want you well, to. Well, I know it's always going to be harder when I like do it on paper. That's not what I'm saying, right? But yeah. uh, what's it called? Like compared to the other stuff, I like this. I like this. Yeah, this is this is fine. Even kinematics is pretty good. Like you know, the where you have to plug in. Um, the speed equations, the velocity equations, and whatnot. Well, there's 10 questions in this worksheets. I don't know. You just sent me about like 43 stuff, but I don't know what like the important big worksheets. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Have you, I, well, did you watch any of the videos that I sent you of the guy? I did the, the night of the test. Uh, but he did the table thing and stuff, right? Yeah, like, but kept... you can even watch his examples on this as well. Like, um, I mean, if, if you're struggling, try and do some on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, let's let's move on. Let's move on. So here, what, what what's given? Um, again, hey, if you want free points, you want to do this. Given, required, yeah. It's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, analysis. If uh, I don't do this, even if I get the answer, right, so it's gonna give me a level two. Yeah, exactly. And then paraphrase. Okay, it's called the grasp method. Just grasp. do this for free method. G R A S P. Right. I'm not gonna do this because um, we don't have that much time, and I'm lazy as well. So. That's for you okay. on the test. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. You don't need to do it. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. So here again, what's going on? Um, now it says when this block just begins to move down the incline. So it's going down, but we need to find the angle this time. Yeah, we need That's to find the angle this time. Uh, so, so coefficient static. Okay, so uh, uh, MQ or whatever it's called is 0.4. Uh, yeah, so now mu k, yeah, mu k. Or mu k, right, mu k. This sorry. is yes. called um, coefficient of kinetic friction, k for kinetic, okay? And this happens when something is moving, when something is already moving. Okay. Now, in this question, though, we don't have a mu k anymore. We have a mu s. 
mu s means the coefficient of static friction and this is the friction yeah that stops something from moving like if you if you push like your phone or something until you apply enough force it's not going to move yeah yeah so the frictional force that's stopping it from moving it's called a static friction and now this is the coefficient the formula is the same though that still equals to like the frictional force is still equals to mu s times um the normal force Sorry, so the static friction and then they're both the same way, right? So static friction is when it's not moving and kinetic friction is when it's moving, but they have the same properties and they have the same formulas. So what, what, what we, I don't understand what would we do with the static right now because isn't it going down? Uh, it says it will move down, yeah? It says it'll, it is going to move down. So what oh, we can do is, uh, so the same thing we've been doing all day. So step one, FG this way, right? Yeah. And then, this one's going to be your FGY, which is going to cancel out with the normal force, right? I drew it a little bit too steep. And then your static would be to the right? Uh, yes, perfect. There we go. That's going to be your static. So this is going to be your FGY, and this is going to be your FGX, right? The right angle is always here, and this theta, whatever, is always up there. OK, that makes sense. Uh, we can use sine to solve this, right? Yeah, we can use sine. So let's do one thing at a time. Let's first find out uh, f f uh, the frictional force. Yeah. Okay. Is it is it uh, two point five times the mg? Um, two point five times mg. Uh, no, frictional force is mu s, right? What's mu s? That's zero point four zero. Sorry, I meant fn. Yeah, and then fn. Yeah, what? Well, tell me what it was. Is then nine point eight times two point five? Uh, yeah, that's that's just fg though. Okay. Uh, oh, FN, FN. Is, FN is FGY. Oh, is that? Sorry, cosine theta. Right? Yeah, cosine theta. Okay. Yeah. Like that. But now we don't have cosine theta, so we can't really do much with this. So we find the theta first, then we do. Uh, we'll find the theta at the end. Let's work on other vectors. So we know this is, everything is going to be in terms of theta here. I can just plug in the numbers, actually. M is uh, 2.5. So that we only have one variable, 9.81 cosine theta. I'm just going to plug this in. And this is going to give me the frictional force in terms of theta. 0 0.4 times 2.5 times 9.81. That's actually 9. Point, that's surprising. Is that a coincidence? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I plug this in. 0 0.4, 2.5, 9.8. So these two just canceled out. I guess it makes sense because 0 0.4 is like a... 0 0.25. Okay. It's the opposite of 0 0.25. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So we have this, okay? Yeah. That is f of s. Uh, f of s. Um, now, what's going to make this thing slide? Again, which vectors cancel out? Fn is always canceled out with fgy. We only right. need fgy to find this frictional force because this is the formula. And sorry, fgx is going to the left? Correct. Sliding down, so it's going to slide this way. Right, right. And we okay. know FGX is equals to what? Uh, just the uh, sine. Yeah, sine of what? Sine theta times something. Uh, F FG. Right. Yeah, correct. FG is MG. Yeah. So F net, right? F net is going to be what? What is F net going to be in terms of the vectors? Can we just find theta from just doing FGX? Uh, we did FGX. We got sine theta times mg. Yeah, but can we just find theta from there? Uh, but we don't have the value for FGX. Oh, right, 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 right. So we can plug in these two numbers, but it will still be in terms of sine theta. Yeah, yeah, I'll be, yeah. So I'll just be um, 2.5 times 9.81. Uh, so 24.53 sine theta is FGX. Oops, miss, missing the theta. Okay. Yeah, so now we will find the theta. F net will be what in terms of the free body diagram here? There's only two forces at play. Uh, the frictional force and Yeah, uh, frictional FGX. force, correct. FGX and frictional force, right? So it'll be something like this, yeah? Yeah. And it's, yeah, we already know it's, uh, what's it called? M times G, right? Yeah. Oh, M times A, M times A. Sorry, time times A, yeah. Okay, M times A equals to? FGX is 24.53 sine theta minus an F of F was 9.81 cos theta. 
Oof, okay. And I can also plug in the value of M. Uh, this block is 2.5 kilograms. All right, there we go. So what would you do now? Okay. Now that's a good question. So when it says, when it just begins to move, what would be its acceleration? Zero. Uh, it's moving though. It's not going to be zero. It's oh, going to be non-zero, right? It's going to be Wait. very small, close to zero, but not quite zero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to plug in a number, which is slightly above zero. Any random number? Like 0 0.1, 0 0.2? Yeah, 0 0.01. Let's do how many sig figs is in this question? Three? Yeah. So I'm going to do two decimal places, two decimal places. Let's do that. Like, uh, like can you do that or are you just doing that as an example? I'm doing that as an example. Technically, what you would do is this. When it just starts moving, yeah? Yeah. When something just starts moving, that means this vector, yeah, this vector, FGX. this vector is greater than the frictional force vector. Makes sense because it's yeah. moving. Yeah, yeah, it's moving. And now what's the magnitude of this vector? You have 24.53 sine theta. FGX yeah. is that. And then frictional force is 9.81 cosine theta. Okay. Now we're going to divide both sides by cosine theta and also going to divide both sides by 24.53. So it would be like 9.8 over 24.3, and then you'll get that number and sub it in for A, right? Uh, so here, hold on with me. So 9.81 over 24.53, yeah. We're not going to sub this number. This is just to show you. This is another way of doing it. It's not going to be as precise, but it works, okay? This will be the technically correct way of doing it, the A plus way of doing it, but it's a little bit complicated. Let me show you. What we're going to do is divide both sides by 24.53, okay? okay? And then we're also going to divide both sides by cosine theta. Now, from grade 11 functions, if you remember, what is sine theta over cosine theta? I don't remember. Actually, tan don't. theta, tan theta. Sine over cos is tan. I did not. I don't know if I learned that, but yes. Okay. I'm sure you did. Um, well, maybe I forgot. I learned. Yeah. It's been a long time. And then you get tan theta is greater than 0 0.399, yeah? Okay. I just divided this. Now, if you have an equation like this, how do you solve for theta? Uh, inverse? Yeah, good, perfect, you remember that. So we're just gonna do tan oh. inverse, 0 0.399 on both, both um, sides. Then I get theta is greater than 21.79 degrees, and there we go. So that I'm not means- the sine over cosine equals tan. This is the first time I've seen them. But you did mind. this in grade. I mean, if you're using the cosine law and stuff, I'm sure you're gonna. There's no other way to do this. Like, um, technically, you'd be correct. surprised. You'd be surprised. I think I would, like learned only like half the curriculum in grade eleven. I guess for now. Well, just Anyways. keep that in mind. All right, that that that's fine too. Sine yes. over cos is tan. All right, this 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 is quicker than just plugging in numbers and you know, this is yeah. this won't be as precise. It still works. Won't be as precise. Okay. So you just find that, sub it in for theta, and then you look at the right answer. Yeah, so we didn't need- And then divide the, it by 2.5. Yeah, so we didn't need any of this. If you understood this. Yeah. So in order for this to move, this means this vector, FGX, must be bigger than FF, right? Step one. Then I just plugged it in for what it is. FGX is 24.53 sine theta. FF is 9.81 cosine theta from up here. And then we divided both sides by the numbers and cosine theta to get this equation and just do tan inverse. And sorry, so what, like, what would tan, like, is it only sine over cosine equals tan, or is it like? Yes, sine over cosine is tan. That's okay, it. what about like tan over cosine? That doesn't work, right? That's, no, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Okay, cool, cool. I'll note that down. And then you just sub it in, you get it. Okay, that kind of makes sense. This was kind of annoying, though. I yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different types of problems. So the only thing you can do is kind of practice. In fact, what I would suggest, right? Watch that guy's video. Like it's not, you can watch it at like 1.5 speed. He will cover basically everything we covered today. Maybe not in detail, but um, actually try and do it first by yourself and then compare uh, if you got it right. Okay, yeah, I'm probably gonna do this tomorrow because I work tomorrow. So after yeah. work, I'll probably just try it. Another thing you could do is do examples from the book you'll be set for the test. So if you just do um, for this, whatever this unit is, yeah. Do you have the book? That's the problem. So you see, I don't actually have a textbook. And I don't have it online either because I don't know which one he uses. He just gives me scans like whenever he wants to. I'll give it to you. I mean, I have... Let me yeah, see. but it's like, I, I don't know which one he's using. because I think no, no, we got it right last time, no way. 
Oh, did we did right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we got it right. Actually, yeah. Can you please send it to me? I appreciate it. I'll that. send it to why. you. Yeah. I don't know why they don't give us the textbooks. I don't know what happened. They're cheap, and then they can give you the e textbooks, right? Like it doesn't cost them any anything. Okay, yeah, I don't understand. Like, where do where do my taxes go? Like my parents' taxes. Yeah, I'll send you the textbook that it was not Pearson. I remember it was the Nelson one. Okay. I'll send you both so, of them actually, um, and then you can just do um, literally. Figure out which one. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's the Nelson one for sure. It's this one. It's this one, one hundred percent. I know that. You yeah, can do examples from both of them. Yeah, you can do examples from both of them. That's what I meant. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so I'm hoping that we could do another class this weekend because 